Hello and welcome back to Corpse Factory. Last time we left off here, where I think it's been a while, but I think Noriko and Koji just went to check out the factory that they were going to use for their operation. And now they went back home. That's where we left off last time. No problem. Should I come upstairs? No, I don't think that's necessary. Okay. By the way, when are we starting work? Well, as soon as I... I mean, as soon as Corpse Girl receives another request for a death, we can start on it. Oh, no grand heist from the morgue first? Think about it. It's important that the cadavers I use match the details of my victims. I won't know what kind of cadaver to use until I receive a photo of the victim. Guess that makes sense. What's the big plan anyway? How do we lift corpses from the morgue? I had a feeling you would ask about this sooner or later. I did tell him that I had a perfect idea after all. Mm, I imagine the biggest issue is writing off the bodies, so to speak. If a cadaver goes missing or is unaccounted for, there will be an investigation. Am I right? Yes, so? We need to be able to take the bodies away from the morgue without anyone ever knowing they're gone. So, the solution is simple. We only take the cadavers that are due to be cremated. Okay, wise guy. A delivery company picks up the cremains. Nearly every day. Huh? Cremains? That's what the ashes are called. Oh, right. So what do we hand over? Empty canisters? It's simple. Fake ashes. Yeah, right. Fake ashes. Like I just have those lying around. Kojiro stops mid-sentence and stares straight at me. Huh. Might be onto something. <laughs> Don't tell me you do have those lying around. Hmm. Not fake ashes. Real cremains. Bodies are cremated every day. Wouldn't be hard to take a bit off the top. Huh? Could probably get away with, like, a quarter? I'm confused. What are you talking about? All right, go, please. Sauce. Every time someone gets cremated, I'll collect a quarter of the ashes, store them, put them aside. Won't take long to fill up a whole canister. Let me see if I follow you. You gather up a little bit of ash from every cadaver that gets cremated. Whenever we want to hoist a body from the morgue, we use the previously gathered ashes to fill a canister. We slap a label on it that says, these are the remains of so-and-so. I mean, it's even easier, I'd assume, if you just have... Because, you know, you have different kind of bodies. Like, some are obviously going to be smaller and produce less ash when cremated than others. So you could probably just get away with taking, as Kojiro said, a quarter off every time. And after a while, I'm assuming even the, the people that come collect them will get used to it. Like, yeah, that's, that's just how it's always been here. I mean, I'm assuming they go to other morgues as well, so they'd have comparisons there too. But yeah, maybe we just have a better furnace just less ash then we take so and so out of the morgue we record that their body has been cremated when in reality it's been snatched from the morgue i imagine the canister of ashes just gets picked up with all the others going out on the same day pretty much we also put a token in the canister a token like a dog tag has the cadaver's serial number engraved on it normally attached to the body before cremation they don't burn Let's the cremains be identified later. Huh, I see. Can we get our hands on those tokens? Sure. The bodies we're lifting from the morgue are due for cremation anyway. I can get the tokens engraved without a hitch. Proper serial numbers and all. Okay, good. This is getting complicated, though. Uh, there's quite a bit we have to remember to do. <laughs> You're not doing any of that, Noriko. It's all on him. Don't worry. I'll take you through it when we need to. Most importantly... I'll need to start gathering portions of cremains. Need to have those collected in advance. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Really. No props. But big question remains. What's that? How do we move cadavers out of the morgue? Ever tried lifting a stiff? Not easy. And you're no bodybuilder. No offense. Um, none taken? Look, security in the joint is minimal. I'm there alone like 90% of the time. We don't have to worry too much about getting busted. As long as we cover our tracks, of course, and only take cadavers we've written off, as you put it. Bodies nobody will come looking for. Hang on. 
Are there security cameras, alarm systems, anything like that? Don't think so. Plenty in the hospital proper, though. That's fine. As long as the morgue is clear. Still, answer my question. How do we move the bodies? You got a hearse? A truck? No, but surely we could get something. What about a small van? You got a license? No. Need a driver's license. And not just that, needs to be suitable for a van. A medium vehicle license, I think. Oh. Is that a thing in Japan? I don't have a license, but surely driving a van can't be that hard, right? We could just rent a van and wing it. Uh-huh. Can't even rent one without a license. <sighs> okay, then. Do you have the right license? Don't look at me. Never driven a vehicle in my life. <sighs> yeah, me neither. Great. So this is a bust. I put my head in my hands. We got so far. We secured a factory, planned out our heist, and... Hmm, hang on. I whip my phone out of my bag and skim through my noise contact. I'd prefer to text and call, but I'm too impatient right now to wait for a response. I start a voice chat request and wait for the recipient to answer. Nice gang, what up? Tomoe, hey, you got a sec? Sure. Do you have a driver's license? Yep. No car, though. Okay, what kind of vehicle is your license good for? Uh, like, cars and scooters. Not vans? I mean, I don't think so. I curse under my breath. Yo, what's the problem? You need a lift or something? Not quite. I need to, uh, pick something up. Oh, something big? Is that why you need a van? Yeah. Hmm. I don't know if there's anything I can do about that. I can't even rent a van with my license. Yeah, I know. I shoot a deftly glance at Kojiro and he just shrugs. A look of I told you so on his face. I mean, if you're desperate, you could just buy a van. Huh? I see secondhand vans listed for sale all the time. Check out the noise marketplace in the classifieds pages. No one will check for a license on a private sale. It's just one chump selling a van to another chump. Holy shit. You're right. <laughs> You're a genius. Well, I don't know about that. Thank you. Oh, by the way, you wouldn't object to a driving gig, would you? Eh, I do owe you one, I suppose. You want me to drive a van, though? If I get busted on my license, I'll go to prison. Uh, again, is that a thing? <laughs> you won't go to prison. It'll be a fine at most. I think. That seems more reasonable. I mean, if they find the corpses in the back of the van, that's that's the point where you'll go to prison, yeah. I look at Kojiro and he gives me another shrug. Uh, look, if you get a fine, I'll pay for it. That cool? Yeah, what the hell? What are the chances of getting busted anyway, right? Can you text me the deets or whatever? The address and stuff? Shinya just got to my place, so I gotta get the door. Okay, <laughs> will do. Thanks, Tomoe. Sure. Later, slut! I end the call and feel a wave of excitement flooding through me. You get all that? More or less. You girls sure are loud. Sorry. So, I'll need you to do me a favor. By van, right? Yeah. You're a big, strong man. You won't get ripped off. I'm just a poor little girl. Cut it out. I'll do it. But you got the money? As a matter of fact... I fondly remember swindling a cool 500,000 yen from Kotomi Iba just this week. 500,000 yen, that would be $5,000. Yeah, that should get you a, a, an old van, but it should get you something that can drive. We've got a 500,000 budget. Will that do? Hmm, maybe. Can't get you anything modern, but I'm sure it's enough. Great. You think you can get something tomorrow? <laughs> I'll try. The noise marketplace, right? That's right. Well, no promises. I'll do my best. Thank you, really. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm heading off. Unless you actually do want me to come upstairs? No. Roger that. See you <laughs> tomorrow. Probably. Koji returns with little more than a wave, exits the building, and crosses the street. I quickly ascend the stairs with a slight spring in my step. June 12th, 
Friday morning. I did check, by the way. Um, I don't remember if it was after last time. I think it was. Uh, what the date actually was at the very beginning. The whole story with Emmy, I think her name was. Uh, in the, you know, sort of clothes shop. And then she killed herself. Um, I think that started on June 13th. So we almost reached that date. So I'm assuming that will be the first... Well, or the next actual request we will get. I'm more eager than usual to get the day started. When I get out of bed, I take my medication, just like usual. I've been good at keeping up with it lately, sticking to my newfound convictions. I wash down the tablets with a glass of water. After getting dressed, I put on my makeup. The same morning routine, the same movements, the same actions. But I feel good today. I'm not dragging my feet. I'm happy that things are moving forward both for me and for Corpse Girl. As I'm packing my handbag, I receive a call from Aoi. Aoi, I haven't spoken to her for a little while. In fact, the last time we spoke, I think it was way back when she didn't come into the office for her first day of work. That was nearly two weeks ago. Shit, I really dropped the ball. I'm supposed to be trying to look after her, but... I've been so caught up with my own crap. In addition, I've been actively trying to put her out of my mind in order to get over my feelings for her. But now I feel like I've just neglected the poor girl at a time when she needs me the most. I hurriedly answered a call, too guilty to keep her waiting any longer. Owie! Hey! Noriko? I'm so glad you called. I've been a terrible friend. I haven't kept in touch with you. No, no. It's okay. Really, I've been busy. I should have called you earlier. Seriously, I'm sorry. It's okay. It's been two weeks. Did you want to talk to me? It's not about like something? it's been four years or something. Yes. Well, I think so. Please, you can talk to me about anything. I'm Noriko, remember? <laughs> yes, that's true. Um, so, I wanted to ask. Have you ever heard of something called Corpse Girl's website? How he knows about Corpse Girl? Yeah, I've heard rumors. Really? Wow. So, does it really exist? Um, apparently, <laughs> yeah. I couldn't find any solid information about it. What is it? Uh, well... How do I explain this to her? Should I explain this to her? Aoi is so sweet and innocent. Does she need to know about a website designed to conjure the omnipresent specter of death? It's all just hearsay. I wouldn't take it too seriously. Oh, but I want to know. Well, people say that you can use the site to request somebody's death. Request a death? But, but how? How does it work? Really, I don't know. I've heard that the victim receives a photo of their own corpse. The photo is supposedly sent from the future. Whoa. Really? That, that sounds like something from a manga. Uh, yeah. Suppose it does. Uh, have you ever used the website? Uh, of course not, silly. What kind of person do you think I am? <sighs> Sorry. Why are you so excited about this anyway? Oh, um, no reason. I kind of just like weird stuff like this. You do? Oh, I never knew that. <laughs> you don't know everything about me, Miss Noriko. Even through the phone, I can sense that Aoi is in a happier mood than usual. Her cheery voice gives me a sense of nostalgia, and I think back to the time we spent together in school. Don't go using the site, okay? It's not good to mess with crap like that. Don't worry. I wouldn't use something so scary. I just heard about it and, well, I got kind of curious is all. Alright. By the way, how is everything? Are you still working at the maid cafe? Uh, yeah. And that customer of yours? The... Uh... He... he's still around. You're not in trouble, are you? No. A light suddenly switches on in my mind, and I realize why Aoi was asking about Corpse Girl's website. Aoi? You're not thinking about requesting that guy's death, are you? Uh... Aoi? You told me that you didn't even want to get the police involved. 
now you want him dead? It's it's not what you think, okay? If if he dies, it won't be because of me, right? No, it'll be because of you. Then the rest of my family won't know I was involved. That is true. They won't disown me or think less of me. But very twisted thinking. Owie. Look, I'm not going to go ahead with it, okay? Besides, you don't even believe this might work. So... Oh, her pride won't let her allow to... Th that won't be allowed to stand. I feel terrible for Aoi. Part of me wants to scream for her to do it, to request that asshole's death and let me or Corpse Girl take care of him. But part of me knows that she can't handle it. She would be crushed with guilt if he really did die. She's delicate and emotional. Being responsible for the death of another human being, a family member at that, would devastate her. Aoi. Hmm. My best advice for you is to go to the police. Don't mess with requesting his death. Hey, I gotta go now. I can see her pouting face in my mind, the face she makes when she doesn't get something she wants. She's not a childish person, but her disappointment is often evident in her expressions. I'll speak to you soon, okay? Okay, bye. She ends the call and I heave a sigh. I get the nagging feeling that she's going to do something rash, but really, can I blame her? That guy, whoever he is, has been harassing her for so long. It's only natural she'd be at her wit's end. So, if she makes the request, I'll take care of him, and if the guilt eats away at her, I'll be there to comfort her. It's the least I can do as her friend, Noriko. It's the least I can do as Corpse Girl. As I resume getting ready for work, I can't help but replay the conversation in my head. Aoi definitely seems excited about the prospect of Corpse Girl's website being the real deal. Excited, eager, filled with anticipation. That same dizzying feeling I get whenever I'm waiting for a victim's death. Waiting for a victim's death. And then it hits me, and I immediately realize why Aoi was so excited. Why she called me in an uncharacteristically talkative mood. Though she's already done it. She wanted my opinion on Corpse Girl's operation. She wanted affirmation, confirmation. She wanted reassurance that her victim really is going to perish. She doesn't know that I'm Corpse Girl, she simply wanted a knowledgeable friend to confirm if the rumors are true. Oh, she obviously hasn't done it because Noriko hasn't received the notification yet. At least she hasn't checked. Because she... Yeah, well, okay. <clears throat> because she has already submitted her victim's photo to the website. And she can't wait to find out if he's going to die. Throwing my hand back to the floor, I grab my laptop from the bed. It's right where I left it before falling asleep last night. I forgot she has to, she has to actually go to the website to check. I boot it up and log into Corpse Girl's website. I mean, probably wouldn't be... For well, once, uh, she was actually smart. Probably wouldn't be a good idea to just get notifications on her phone. Uh, the little blinking notification that I dream about seeing greets me. Three new requests. Oh, that's a lot. Three new requests? How? I can't believe what I'm seeing. I quickly queue up the photos to download. After a few seconds, they all open up and I flick through them with a dumbfounded expression plastered across my face. They're all female, so that rules out my theory that Aoi has requested the death of the guy harassing her. I suppose she really was just excited about the prospect of the website, but hadn't actually gone through with anything yet. But what really surprises me about the new requests is that I recognize one of the young women, yet another person I'm familiar with. Out of all the people in the world, what are the chances of knowing multiple people requested through the website? The girl is Amy Katsuno, if I remember correctly. She went to senior high school with Aoi, Shinya, and myself. I never liked her much. In fact, she was somewhat of a bully toward me. <laughs> ironic. Nothing more than name-calling, but in my mind, that's as bad as anything else. It's not hard to imagine someone wanting her dead. The other two victims are strangers to me. A ditzy looking airhead with pink hair and a worn out strained woman who could be anywhere from 20 to 40. Ah, she looks about 20. Yeah, <laughs> I'll leave it there, she doesn't look 40 at all. To get three requests all at once is remarkable. How am I going to work through all of these? It's a shame that my operation with Kojo isn't fully set up yet. It would be fantastic to go all out in these requests, secure some corpses and take some truly convincing photos. Well, there's no use stressing over that. 
the best thing I can do is simply get to work on forging some photos. In fact, maybe I'll skip work today so I can dedicate the time to crafting these photos. It's Friday after all, pretty much the weekend, no one will care if I don't show up at the office. I nod to myself as if convincing my own mind that I'm making the right choice. I load up the database of the deceased. I step outside my apartment building, squinting in order to defend myself from the overwhelming rays of sunlight assaulting my eyes. As narrow as my vision is, I'm able to determine that Kojiro is nowhere to be seen. Where is he? Once again, he's making me wait. As I mumble under my breath, I hear the screeching of tires and watch in disbelief as a van pulls up outside my apartment building. It's a beat up old thing that may have once been white but is now covered in grime. The windows are either tinted or encrusted with dirt. To my surprise the window on the passenger's side lowers and I see some familiar faces. Next to Kojiro in the driver's seat is none other than Tomoe. She's waving and grinning like a lunatic. Hey skank! So, how's this? My face must reveal my fury because Kojiro flinches before I can even respond. Where did you even get this piece of shit? Some guy. <laughs> some guy? What guy? Uh, some guy from the noise marketplace. Only wanted 250 for it. So, here's the other half of your money back. You're welcome. He holds up the paper bag I gave him earlier. It seems to still have a bit of weight to it. When Kojiro showed up at my apartment earlier this morning, he told me he'd found a great deal on a van. I had a good feeling about it and handed him the money to go and secure the vehicle. However, he mentioned that he needed a driver to haul it back. He asked me to call Tomoe for assistance. Thankfully, Tomoe agreed to help. Any opportunity to leave the office was good enough for her. I never expected her and Kojiro to come back driving a death trap on wheels. Well, you gave them essentially $5,000. What do you expect? Cars are expensive. Unbelievable. We're not going to die in this thing, are we? It depends on Tomoe's driving. Who knows? It has AC! See? Wait. It's a great deal. Did you ask the guy if anyone has ever been murdered in it? What do you care? It's gonna see a lot of corpses before we're done with it. He's got a point, but I still don't feel good about it. Uh, we're picking up corpses in this thing. It's important. And you owe me one, remember? <laughs> that shit's gross. I don't mind driving, but... Come on. No one asks you to ask you to carry them. Ugh, whatever. As long as I don't have to touch nothing. Though you're probably the strongest out of the three. I'm doing the heavy lifting. Don't worry. Tomo leans over Kojiro and squeezes past him awkwardly to speak to me in a hushed voice. Who is this weirdo anyway? When you said you wanted me to go pick up a van, I thought you'd put me in decent company. <sighs> Sorry. He's my uh business partner. This is all for corpse girl shit, right? Well, whatever. I'm cool with it. Just hope this dude doesn't try to cut me or nothing. She pulls back and gives Kojiro some air. Anyway, get in. Huh? Why? Going to the morgue. Hang on, hang on. I haven't planned anything yet. You want to do this now? If not now, when? Any other time, after I've had a chance to get organized. Hmm. You have requests, right? Yeah. Three, actually. Right. So let's go get some bodies that match. But you haven't even had time to put aside any ashes. You were gonna collect a little from each cremation and put them aside and... Already done. Seriously? Worked night chef last night. Got like three or four canisters saved up. You said you've got three requests? Well, how convenient. But... This operation was your idea. You want to do it or not? I'm just not ready. Kojiro thinks he can just rock up to my place and take me to the morgue, somewhere I've never been? I've had no time to prepare myself, no time to even think about it. Visiting the factory yesterday left me feeling pretty exhausted. Having to tackle another new place today is simply too much to ask. I told you I'd guide you through the process, right? There's nothing to worry about. You don't understand. I... I've never been to the morgue before. Tomoe shoots me a quizzical look from behind Kojiro. You nervous? I think I understand. For me, it's the most relaxing place on Earth. My little sanctuary. Really? Sure. 
No one to talk to me, no one to bother me, unless you count the dead, of course. I suppose that's true. And you won't be alone. You've got me, and this chick. It's Tomoe, thank you very much. Right, Sauce. I take a deep breath and brace myself for the next thing I'm about to say. Okay, let's go. Kojiro is right, everything will be okay. I need to get used to going to the morgue. It's a new place, but it's going to be an essential place. I tell myself that this is all for Corpse Girl, for me, for us. Kojiro pulls the van's sliding door open and I take a careful step inside. The morgue is a lot colder than I imagined it would be. I berate myself for not bringing a sweater, but there's nothing I can do about it now. The place has an icy, otherworldly feel to it. It's depressing and clinical and devoid of hope. And then there's the stench. It's not as overwhelming as I feared it may be, but it lingers and claws at my senses. It clings inside my nostrils and mouth and the very interior of my skull. It's very easy to understand why Kojira's clothes always smell like this place. Once the door gets a grip on you, it doesn't let go. Honey, I'm home. A poor joke and poor taste, even for Kojira. I feel like I'm going to vomit. Even Tomo is looking a bit paler than normal. I'm surprised she accompanied us inside after she spent the whole drive over insisting that she would stay in the van. They store bodies in here? Of course. See all these lockers? They're cold chambers. Pretty much all of them are full. A body in each. Fucking disgusting. Noriko? Yeah? I keep things in order around here. Chambers on the left wall, or cadavers due for cremation. And what about the lockers on the right wall? No touchy-touchy. They're new arrivals, or they're being collected for some reason or other. Autopsy, funeral, etc. Got it. So, we can only make use of the cadavers in the lockers on the left wall. That's a bingo. I listlessly wander over to the left wall. There must be dozens of cold chambers here, all lined up in neat rows. Some doors are slightly ajar, and peeking inside reveals that they're empty, but the vast majority are sealed tight, the occupants within sleeping soundly. Hey, question. Shoot. How do I know who is in each locker? Like... If I wanted to get an old woman's corpse, do I just have to search blindly? <coughs> nah. Okay, then what do I do? Come here. I walk over to Kojiro and follow him to a large computer monitor mounted on the far wall. He taps on a little panel and sets into the wall and a shelf pops out, revealing a keyboard and mouse. Familiar with databases? Somewhat. Perhaps all my data entry experience at Temujin will finally pay off here. It's pretty simple anyway. Live database contains the current inventory items. Ew. Well, you refer to these bodies as inventory items? What would you call them? Well, like, they used to be real people and shit, right? Why not show some respect? I don't understand. They're cadavers. I put a trembling hand onto my shoulder. I want to comfort her, but the act of doing so is still alien to me. Uh, worry about him, Tomoe. He can be a bit insensitive. <sighs> He's a freak! Wow. Ouch. Tomoe scoffs and makes a gesture with her middle finger. I'm a little surprised that she's so bothered by this. It's kind of funny that she holds respect for the dead, but not so much for the living. Okay. So, I can search this database for bodies that match my needs. Yep. Just use the filters at the top. Not many categories, but it has the basics. Age range, gender, name... Not that that'll be useful to you. Actually, that's about it. It's enough. It'll save some time at the very least. Okay, so you want to hoist three bodies today, right? You said you have three requests? Yeah, but... This place is kind of overwhelming. I'm hesitant to bite off more than we can chew. What's the game plan, then? How about we just take one body today? We'll take it back to the factory, work on it, and see how we go. Works for me. Here, use the database. Ojiro steps away from the monitor and indicates that I should use it. I rest my sweaty hands on the keyboard and feel the cold metal buttons sting my skin. A metal keyboard. It's very fitting for this cold, lifeless place. 
I have three requests currently in the works. I managed to get photos edited for all three of them thanks to taking the day off from the office. There's Amy Kasano, the bully I went to school with, and then there's the pink-haired girl and the woman that looked tired and worn out. I should try and find a cadaver that matches the appearance of one of those victims. I use the database's filter to search for females and then I narrow down the age range to young adults. There are a lot of hits, just how many people are entombed here anyway? I skim through the list of results. Since their names are meaningless to me, they might as well all be identical. But the column of data containing cold chamber identification codes is interesting. I point one of the results out to Kojiro. Hey, how do I know what these numbers mean? This one here is 64AB. This one is number 31AA. Ah, okay. Letters correspond to location. First letter refers to left wall or right wall. Second letter refers to top row or bottom row. Mm, give me an example. Okay, this one? Number 64AB. The A means it's on the left wall and the B means it's on the bottom row. Left wall. That's the side I can choose from, right? The body's due for cremation? Yep. So I could grab number 64AB if I wanted. Up to you. But this one here... Let's see... Number 98BA. Could I grab that? Obviously not, Noriko. No. The first letter is B, so that's on the right wall. No go. Not scheduled for cremation. <laughs> I think I get it. Thanks. I make a mental list of cold chambers on the left wall that fit my needs. I'm going to start cracking open some of these sarcophagi. Haha. <laughs> that's a new one. Man. I hope that my nervousness isn't showing. I almost can't believe that I'm about to examine corpses in the flesh. Corpse Girl would be proud of me right now. As I walk over to the left wall of cold chambers, I catch a glimpse of Tomoe. She's standing by the exit, swiping on her phone as she taps her foot. I reach the first locker I want to look at. Here we go. There's a metal handle on the front of the chamber. It's paired with a release button, which I gather has to be pressed in at the same time as the handle is pulled forward. I grip the handle tightly, press the button, and pull with all my strength. A hiss echoes throughout the morgue as frigid pressurized air billows out of the chamber. The door is now wide open, revealing the darkness within the locker. I peer inside. I can make out the shape of a body bag lying atop the sliding tray inside the locker. I thought the body would slide out automatically. No? It just pulled the tray out, like you'd pull out an oven tray. I take a deep breath and grab the edge of the tray, then slide it out. Thankfully, the thick rollers along the bottom rail do most of the work, and once it has momentum, the tray slides all the way out of the chamber. My prize is revealed at last. A musty white body bag, packed full with a decomposing corpse. And uh, now what? Just unzip the HRP. Uh, what? Kojiro rolls his eyes. Uh, the body bag. Unzip it, but cover your nose. I do, as I'm told. My left hand pinches my nostrils and my right hand grips the tag attached to the bag's zipper. I tuck the tag down and down and drag it along the length of the bag and the zip makes a familiar sound. And I smell the decomposing corpse and vomit on the ground and fall to my knees trying to catch my vomit and hold my nose closed at the same time. Tears well in my eyes and I can't help but cry as the stench strikes me across the face again and again and the river of bile and sick pouring down my clothes feels like a searing hot cattle prod against my skin. The sight of the corpse in the back flickers in my vision and sears itself into my retinas and I can't get it out of my head even when I close my eyes and I can't get it out of my head and I can't not see it anymore and I can't help but think of my own reflection and how much I resemble Noriko and Corpse Girl and the corpse in the back all mixed together in some completely fucked up hybrid of decaying flesh and bone. I think Kojiro Tome or Aoi grabs my shoulders to drag me away from the body, but Aoi isn't here anyway, and the hands feel so strong and warm and not brittle and lifeless like mine, and not slender and perfect like Aoi's, but I get dragged away regardless, and my eyes are watering and the fluorescent lights on the ceiling are magnified by my tears, and I want to tear my eyes out and get the sight of the corpse out of my mind. I've seen so many corpses over the last year, I've seen countless photos of bodies dismembered and asphyxiated and electrocuted and shot and maimed and drowned and yet the decaying corpse in the body bag or the HRP as Kojiro called it is worse than any of them and it's worse than anything I could have ever imagined and it's worse than me and worse than Corpse Girl and for a fleeting moment I begin to question what I've spent the last year doing, what am I doing involving myself with the dead and buried? 
The frantic screams of a girl resound in my ears and my eyes and my nostrils, and I think she's calling my name, but it doesn't sound like my name. It sounds like Noriko or something along those lines. Maybe Yuriko. Maybe she's calling out for my sister, but my sister isn't here and Noriko isn't here, and I'm the only one here lying on my side on the cold tile floor and covered in warm vomit and hot tears, and I feel the body lying next to me and smiling and offering me a cup of coffee from that lovely French cafe I went to one time. I picture that lifeless corpse in my mind, smiling and calling me names like bitch queen or goth bitch or bitch bitch or basically just any senseless name that you can pair with the word bitch. The word I hate so much that Yuriko used to always call me, that mother used to always call me, that word that carries so much hate and contempt and yet rolls off the tongue so easily. The lifeless corpse keeps calling me names, keeps taunting me, keeps growing out her long blonde hair and she taunts me with a fake smile and fake eyelash as she corners me in the classroom and pulls my hair and rips out a fistful of it and laughs and calls me bitchy bitch 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 and screams and cackles and I realize that she's always bullied me like this and I hate her for it because I never did anything to her. I never did anything to Amy Katsuno, but she always bullied me, but she never bullied Aoi because no one was allowed to bully Aoi because the teachers all said so, they all said she's been through too much already, but it's okay to bully Noriko or me or Noriko, that's fine they all said, so Amy liked to bully me and call me the bitch and bitch and she liked to pull my hair out, but that's fine because hair grows back eventually and it meant that she didn't bully Aoi, so in a way I was protecting Aoi and that's all that ever really mattered. And the corpse in my mind isn't Amy, but it might as well be, it might as well be her, and maybe I can make it her, maybe the corpse can become Amy Katsuno, and if I send her the photograph of the corpse, then she might kill herself, she might kill herself. 